I didn't really get to know Senator Brown um, yeah. very well. And we stopped by his office a, a month or so ago. Yeah. I tell you, fire. He's ready to roll. This guy, this guy is is on our side, and he comes here every day and stands up for conservative principles. <coughs> I wanted to come down here because one of our main objectives and our legislative priority was. Um, uh, employee protection, and he's been carrying uh, many of the employee protection bills. So I wanted Senator Brown to come down and say a few words. Senator, thank you. thank you so much. Well, I'm a quiet, unassuming guy that doesn't do anything controversial. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate America's prosperity. And you know, when uh, when you're getting beat up pretty good, and uh, they come by and they smile and they appreciate what you're doing, that that does help a lot. So. I do carry a lot of the labor issues. We did get paycheck protection through the Senate this year, and hopefully the House will pick it up and actually do something meaningful with it. This very similar mirrors what Mitch Daniel done in Indiana when he was governor, uh, and uh, it really pulled a lot of money out of public employee labor unions that would go 98% and more to uh, Democratic coffers and in state races. We're very near to having language uh, to deal with prevailing wage law. Uh, the original bill I filed was just to take prevailing wage law completely out, gone, it's over. And uh, of course, uh, even open shops don't particularly want that, even though generally a good craftsman's going to be paid pretty much prevailing wage rate because he's, he's worth it. But what we're working on is trying to really address the trend. And you're paying for that. That's your money on any public project, whether it's school, highways, municipal buildings, county buildings, you have to pay prevailing wage. Cities, it, it's just unbelievable the difference in cost. Uh, one of the providers in my area does glass. That's his deal. Recently had a bill at the university to replace a glass door and uh, clean up around the glass door. His bid was for $22,000. Well, then it became a prevailing wage job because it was a replacement, not a repair. That bid suddenly went up to $38,000. So the university said, we can't afford that. We won't do it. So this happens over and over again. And here we're looking at building new roads. And by the way, I could not vote for that transportation idea. You guys are going to have the final say on it. And if that passes, it'll be the biggest increase in the history of the world. Uh, biggest tax increase, something like $8 billion. And I'm not sure that we have the safeguards in that bill to make sure that MoDOT does the right and the proper thing with that money. And so I voted no on that issue. Uh, and if we're going to spend $8 billion building roads, Oklahoma and Kansas do not, prevailing wage law does not apply to their road jobs. So a lot of people that build roads out there won't even bid in Missouri because they can't build hardly any miles compared to what they can build in those states. So this is a big issue uh, going forward. Uh, prevailing wage, as I said, I think we're very close to having something we can bring to the floor and and and, uh, and get passed. You know, you, you hope that you can actually get to an end on something and get something the governor will sign or at least be able to be to override if he doesn't. And uh, so that's, that's where we're at on prevailing wage law. I also filed right to work. It's probably not going to come up this year. As you under, you have to understand, when you're working to get a state right to work, that's not just, I mean, yes, if we had a Republican governor, we could have done it this year. It had been done and over with. Uh, unfortunately, with a Democratic governor, it's going to take two or three years probably to get to that point. And we've got to keep our numbers in the Senate and the House as well. So, uh, it, you know, and, and I'm not a patient guy. I want to get this done now and get it over with, uh, yet you learn to be somewhat patient up here, and you have to compromise, but you can never sell out. And I, and I think that's an important point that, uh, you know, I, I think on, on the national level, you realize that there's 100 senators, 435 reps, and then there's a president, and I think there's eight or 10 Supreme Court judges. So about 545 people are dictating and ruling our lives today. I don't care if a congressman or a senator is a Republican or Democrat when they start saying, well, we're going to have to do this because of what's happened here. They're the reason that happened. 
You have to always realize we're the mess that we're in because of what they've done. We didn't do it. They did it. And I think it behooves us, you know, and, and we all blame Washington, but we like to say, you know, but my congressman, he's not that way. Uh, I think we need to remind them occasionally, hey, you know, you guys did this thing. Don't come back and say, hey, what are you going to do? I want you to pick up. <coughs> That's your job. Go up there and do it. I think one of the biggest issues facing us, of course, it's always a big issue, the things that we're required constitutionally to do is number one, pass the budget, and number two, fund public education. The rest of this is uh, is not required by the Constitution. Uh, the House, uh, the Independence, the budget will do it. We will we'll put some money in the budget to help pay for college that the troops are engaged in now, and the federal pull that money away. We can't, we're not flush with cash in Missouri, don't get me wrong, but we can put a million, million and a half in there and really help these kids at least stay in school that are serving our country uh, and having the opportunity to go to college. I think that's an important issue in the budget. Uh, this, does, this deal with the Department of Revenue, that should incense and make everyone mad uh, that's a Missourian. We have subpoenaed the Department of Revenue, the Appropriations Committee. That means they got to testify under oath. The last time when they were just giving us a runaround, they're going to have to answer these questions appropriately, or if they're not, then we, we've got opportunity to call charges. Our goal is to go back to the old system, to where you're, you get your license while you're uh, in, a, in, in your local facility. You know, the reason, supposedly, that they did this data collection thing and and of course, uh, Marco Trust is actually a company out of Atlanta, Georgia, that's owned by French people. And supposedly they destroyed all of this data that they're collecting. We have no proof of that. We have no evidence to support that. We don't know what they're doing to data. But supposedly the reason they went this way was because they had a couple of employees somewhere in northwest Missouri that may have fraudulently done a couple of driver's licenses. Well, I think you can address that on the local issue, uh, deal with those people, fire them, uh, a lot better you can address or deal with this issue with more control and give our people a lot better protection. So that, that's where we're going to head with this thing. And, and I don't think they can stop this from doing it. But I won't take up a lot of your time. I really appreciate you taking the time to come and see us today. I mean, we need to be reminded, just like our federal reps and senators need to be reminded. Hello. And uh, Dr. Shaw will not be uh, a filibuster uh, Medicaid expansion by himself. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>